Um, prior to last year, um, the safety regulations for the UK mountain, for the UK bicycle industry, um, they didn't differentiate between mountain bikes, or racing bikes, or BMX bikes, or any bikes like that. It's BS6102, and it was more to do with road safety. It had no load cases in it. Uh, told you you had to walk out of the shop with reflectors on your bike. It was that one. Um, if you've ever worked in a bike shop. Um, was it, in terms of designing a bike and in terms of intrinsic safety of a bicycle frame or a bicycle component, it wasn't worth the paper it was written on. Um, and most of us in the industry, as well as developing our own low cases, used to use something called DIN 79100, which was the German standard, which was very prescriptive and it sort of became a de facto industry standard because it was kind of the go-to place to, you know, to figure out whether your low cases were in the ballpark and what have you. Um, and obviously if you wanted to sell frames in Germany, you had to actually prove that you met it, so you had to lab test it. Um, and as part of the ongoing process of uh, Euro norming, normalising all the, harmonising all the safety standards across the EU, um, uh, one, uh, EN 14766 was written, which is very similar to the DIN 79100, only not as good. Um, and in 2000 and late 2008, um, it was published, it, be it became the British standard. So we've got BSEM 14766, uh, the Germans have DIN 14766. Um, it's the same across the EU. Um, it's a very prescriptive standard. It has load cases for handlebars and brakes and frames and forks and all these things. And it's actually split out into mountain. 14766 is actually for mountain bikes. And there's two others. There's one for trekking bikes and there's one for road racing bikes. And there will be one for BMX bikes. Um, and you have to design to the load cases. You have to prove that you meet them more importantly. So it brought, it, it brought in mandatory lab testing, which is not something that's been... Uh, that's prevalent in the industry. Certainly with the advent of, well, pretty much my business model, um, you know, Brandt's business model, uh, being able to order 100 frames from Taiwan, uh, get them shipped over and say you're a bike company, um, it's actually not the most difficult thing to do and in terms of the commercial side of it. So you're getting, you were getting a lot of people all over the world using bike CAD or even just fag packet sketches, I don't know, just drawing up the shape of a frame, picking a tube set and saying, can you build me this in this colour please? And the Taiwanese will do it, they will not bat an eyelid about the strength, the, qual you know, the quality they'll be bothered about, but the strength, you know, what it looks like, the shape, they won't, they just don't care. If that's what you ask for, that's what will build you. Um, so, there's all these, so I think an attempt to introduce some more engineering rigour into the industry was very, very welcome. Um, the issue I had was is that there were, there were two things. Firstly, the politics surrounding the introduction virtually put me out of business because um, the DFT, the Department for Transport, um, said sometime in early 2009, this is now law. Um, it's now illegal to sell frames that aren't compliant to this. And everyone said, whoa, whoa, you know, we're halfway through a model year. We, you know, we need more notice than that. Uh, okay, well, September then, next model year, it's all got to be compliant. So we all did a load of lab testing, and unfortunately, um, the quality of the load cases in the standard is um, not exactly great. Um, and this one particular load case broke a lot of frames. Um, and it was, uh, it got pretty terrifying there for a while because you've got these frames like I tested, the first time I tested a sole, um, this load case is for 50,000 cycles in fatigue. It's the horizontal fatigue. So you get a frame and you bolt it up at the back end and you stick a great big fork in it and you grab it at the front end and you load towards the bottom bracket and then you load away from the bottom bracket 50,000 times. And the first sole I tested failed after 7,000 cycles. Now this is a frame that had two in-service failures. 
two, two failures that I could definitely say, yes, that has been overloaded. You know, we had the odd, you know, the odd crack from a warranty issue, you know, from a poor weld or something like that. But there were two frames. This is a frame with an exemplary service record, and it didn't get close to this standard. And, so, so, and, and I suddenly started hearing things from the other guys, you know, the other guys I know, like Brandt, like Michael from Orange, um, like the Genesis guys, going, are you, are you struggling? You know, have you tested a frame yet? <laughs> um, so we all kind of clubbed together a little bit because, you know, with the little guys, you know, we can't be just like chucking frames and frames and frames of test rigs. So the issue was is that this load case has 60 kilograms, to, uh, 60 kilograms, 600 newtons towards the bottom bracket. Yeah, it seems fair enough. 1,200 newtons away from the bottom bracket. Now, can any of you think of a situation where that would actually happen in real life? You'd need to. Hit, I've done that calculation. You'd need to hit it at nine g impact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, land straight down to get the horizontal component of the vertical of the vertical yeah, impact. Yeah, that's yeah. The vertical yeah. The vertical impact. The normal reaction is that way with the vertical component. It's a 9G impact. It's a 9G impact, but they're saying this is the fatigue load case, you've got to do that 50,000 times. Um, so, but suddenly we're faced with this issue where it's coming, we're potentially saying it's illegal to sell frames that aren't compliant to this. Um, so there was a lot of hurried and fevered redesigning of frames. Um, and luckily, I, you know, I did hit the mark. But the problem was is that I, I was so scared of having something that was illegal to sell, um, come sort of September, October time, that I didn't, yeah, you know, I didn't order stock, and I'm working on a new frame, um, and we ended up pretty much out of stock for about three months. So, and as it turned out, the DFT um, had some complaints from people, um, and put it out to consultation again, um, in in about August, and it's still not, it's still not completely been resolved. Um, but, you know, so there's this combination of this very poorly written standard, and obviously, and, and I know from whence I speak, I come from the rail industry where you have to, before a rail vehicle gets anywhere near the railway, you have to meet what's called railway group standards. And they they mandate load cases, um, they mandate safety issues, they mandate, you know, all sorts of things. You know, there's a bunch of them you have to meet. And then some third party, you know, you get another person, a vehicle acceptance body, to look at all your calculations and say, yes, I think they all meet it, that's safe, that's fine. And then you can go and test your vehicle on the railway. This is not a well-written standard. Um, the problem is that the bike industry isn't organised and really organised enough to do anything about it, unfortunately. Um, because BS6102 was so useless, most uh, there's a lot of people who just stuck their head in the sand, just thought, oh, yeah, it's just another stand, we'll ignore that. Um, so it's not great, because it doesn't have real load cases in it, it has a huge amount of inconsistency in it as well. The fork load case is lower than the frame load case for that horizontal fatigue. So forks that are compliant to the standard can't transmit the load case which you have to test your frame to. And, and, it, and, it, and I know this because I've broken several pairs of forks on test rigs before we went to the girder forks, which we were trying to avoid using. Um, stuff like suspension bike design, um, there's no bottom out load case. When I, when I design a suspension bike, I design the shock mountings to take 10,000 bottom outs. Um, there's, not a, there's not a load case like that in the standard. There's a fatigue load case for general vertical fatigue. But you could design a frame which is completely and utterly compliant to the safety standard, and a guy could do one five foot drop off and break it. Still compliant to the standard. Um, my issue I have with it is that it's, it's setting its stall out as the, sa the safety standard, and it does look very prescriptive and very comprehensive. Um, and, in, and if it's not changed in, in years to come, you will get cases like that. You will get people coming into the industry and wanting to design a bike and saying, well, that's how I design a bike. It's like a manual. Um, and so, yeah, it's not, it's not ideal. I'm going to stop now.